Back at our table this morning, Congressman Tom McClintock, Republican of California. Thank you for being here, member of the Budget and Judiciary Committees. Let's start with how you have voted so far in the two rounds of balloting for Jim Jordan and why. Well, I've voted for Jim Jordan. I'm a, a big uh, fan of his. I think he'd make a great speaker, but uh, I think that uh, what was uh, done with McCarthy was in, entirely illegitimate. It was a complete collapse of party discipline, and no party can govern like that. Uh, so um, uh, that's where we are right now. You offered a motion to reinstate the former speaker, Kevin McCarthy. Right. Where did that go? Uh, Kevin said he thought that was, uh, it was not the right direction to take right now, so he, he withdrew himself and I withdrew the motion. So what do you think of the prospects of that? I, I think it's going to end one of two ways. Either we're going to restore party discipline and restore Kevin McCarthy as the speaker with the United Republican Front, or we're going to see a uh, Hakeem Jeffries puppet take over as Speaker of the House. That actually happened in California in 1994. Republicans had a one-vote majority in the state assembly, uh, but uh, the Democratic uh, leader, uh, Willie Brown, was able to, to uh, seduce uh, three quislings among the 41 uh, to join the Democrats and deny the Republicans the, uh, the, the majority that the voters had awarded them. That was the last time the Republicans have ever had a majority in the California Assembly, and I would hate to see that happen here. But they were able to find three out of 41. Uh, finding five out of, uh, what, 221, that should be child's play. What are the odds of both of those options, realistically? Well, the, the, the first option depends upon uh, uh, enough of these malcontents having the wisdom to understand the enormous damage that they've done and the courage to admit it and correct it. Uh, uh, what the prospects of that are, I can't read minds and I can't tell fortunes, but that's what's going to have to happen. Otherwise, I think we will uh, see a collapse of the majority. As I said, no party can govern in this manner. Uh, there has to be a degree of party discipline uh, in the questions that, that involve running the House. The policy votes that we cast are between ourselves, our constituents, and our consciences. But the decisions of how the House is to be run, that has to belong collectively to the majority party, or it's not a majority party. A majority party is only that when it votes as a majority. Uh, the Democrats do that very effectively. The Republicans used to, and, uh, and that's, that's what's collapsed. Uh, and that's what will be the end of the Republican majority if it, if it continues. There are some in your party who are calling on giving powers to Patrick McHenry to bring legislation to the floor. Some believe that would take votes from Democrats, that type of proposal, which would cost Republicans some concessions. Is, do you, then, If that happens, do you believe that Patrick McHenry is a puppet of the Democratic Party? Uh, I have a great deal of respect for Patrick uh, McHenry. Uh, so, no, I don't think that, that he would agree to such a thing. More to the point, though, the Constitution doesn't mention anything about a sort of speaker or a half speaker or a temporary speaker. Uh, you're either speaker or you're not. That is the only position in the Constitution. And that's absolutely essential to the efficient running of the House. So I, I think just on policy grounds, take personalities out of it, take politics out of it. Just as a question of public policy, I think it would be a bad idea. What do you say to some of Jim Jordan's supporters who have reached out with threats to your colleagues who have opposed well, him? Well, they even threatened me, and I've been a, a Jim Jordan supporter from day one. Who? Uh, 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 a woman named Luna from, uh, from Florida. Uh, um, and I, I told Jim, you know, I've supported you in every vote. I've supported you in every conversation I've had. Uh, with with uh, colleagues, um, uh, but this is counterproductive to your election, and I think it's going to cost him the election. I told him the Freedom Caucus is out of control, uh, and and it's become a hindrance to to to, to his election. He yesterday did put out uh, in a tweet that the threats needed to stop; that he was not yes, endorsing to his, them. To but his credit, he said that very clearly and very strongly. Has he done enough, though? Uh, well, we'll see. What do you mean? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see if, if, if this stops. But I, I think it's been, I, 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 th I think it, it will, if anything costs him the, 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 uh, the speakership, it will be that. Does and, he? And that's, that's an irony in it all, isn't it? I mean, Kevin McCarthy uh, made more concessions to conservatives than any speaker I've ever served with. Uh, in, in 22 years in the California legislature, in 15 years in the, uh, in the Congress, uh, uh, he has been the, the, the uh, most conservative 
speaker, you know, he's not a free agent. Uh, the, 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 the speaker has to represent the, the consensus of the majority. Uh, uh, but uh, when it, so they can nudge the, the, in, a, in a certain direction. He is always nudged to, toward conservatives. And yet it was a group of self-proclaimed conservatives uh, uh, who combined with a united Democratic Party to, uh, to, to oust him. Uh, the, the irony is just stunning. But I, I think that the lunatic fringe of the Republican Party has become um, uh, a threat to the conservative movement. What are you hearing this morning? Will there be a third round of voting? And will the Republicans nominate Jim Jordan? Uh, again, can't read minds, can't tell fortunes. We've been told there won't be any votes before noon. Uh, we've not had notification of any votes after noon. Uh, one thing that troubles me, though, is this. That, that building behind us there, uh, that was built for just one purpose and one purpose only, to talk out our differences. That's what we do in there. We talk out our differences. It is a deliberative process. Uh, and, and we should be there right now deliberating. We should be in conference meetings, yelling at each other, insulting each other, appealing to each other, reasoning with each other, uh, deliberating. And we're not doing that. I don't think we can get closer to, to resolving this w w without that process unfolding as messy and unpleasant and, and annoying as it is, uh, uh, that's, the, that, that's how this process works and can't work if we're not talking to each other. Let's open up this conversation to okay. our viewers. All right, Catherine in Pennsylvania, Republican. Hi, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. I have two comments, one on the Speaker House. I think everybody just needs to grow up and put their big boy pants on and get this done. And number two, as far as the war, um, I don't understand. I, as a taxpayer, I am fed up of paying with for foreign wars. Why are we not giving them low interest loans? Why is the taxpayer always stuck holding the bag? And that's my comments. Thank right, you Catherine, for taking my call. You bet. Well, there, there's some tr trouble as uh, troubling aspects of that, that 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 bother me. For example, why are we paying the salaries of bureaucrats and the pensions of public employees in Ukraine? That's not what that money should be used for. Uh, I am all for assuring that they have the, the uh, military supplies that they need to, to, to defeat the Russians. Uh, and, and, and the same thing goes with, with uh, Israel, they're, they're absolutely essential. Uh, but you know, when we did that for Britain before the entry of the United States into the war, it was lend-lease. Uh, and I think that, that you're absolutely right, that is, 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 it would be the more appropriate route to take. What is sheer lunacy is this nonsense of, of, uh, of sending uh, Hamas a hundred million dollars as the president has just proposed for humanitarian aid. Well, that's not going to go to the people of, of uh, uh, Gaza. That's going to go to Hamas. Uh, the, the, you, you send humanitarian aid to your friends. You don't send it to your enemies. How do you know? What evidence do you have that it would not go to Palestinians? The president said in a tweet that he was going to make sure that there are safety guards in place so that this money goes to the people the Palestinians, the two million Well, we, we know that all of the humanitarian aid, I, I saw the uh, estimate of $338 million of, of U.S. taxpayer money uh, funneled through the U.N. Uh, to Gaza for humanitarian aid uh, was actually expropriated by Hamas. Uh, in fact, there was just an article the other day about uh, 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 gasoline supplies provided with humanitarian aid going directly to Hamas. Are you opposed to humanitarian aid when... I'm, I'm, opposed, I'm opposed to sending aid to your enemies, period. Uh, can you imagine during World War II if we had been sending humanitarian aid to Germany? That's nuts. And yet that's exactly what the president has proposed. What about those civilians, though, that are caught in this war? That is a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, 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 as Sherman said, war is hell. Uh, uh, the difference is Hamas targets civilians uh, uh, and uses its civilians as shields.